Ready? Mark. Wow, that's serious. Welcome to the December 20th uh, Zoning Advisory Committee meeting. So tonight we are going to discuss accessory family dwelling in it, um, as well as uh, some additional items to allow by right in industrial a zoning as well as some site plan standards and if as time allows we'll go over the wording from that we discussed last time for some changes so um but to begin with um the accessory family dwelling um georgia yes. there were several different reference materials in our packet and if you could just review what we have there because i believe Several of them were wording proposals from either last year or the year before town meeting. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the first document in the bylaw in the packet is the existing accessory family dwelling unit bylaw, um, and then after that was a proposed bylaw that um, did not pass at the most recent town meeting. Um, and I noted that it failed, or yes was 199 and no was 103. Um, so comparing those two, it seemed that they added the provision to allow two bedrooms and the accessory dwelling unit. Um, and they also added a definition, kind of another accessory is a mini accessory unit. Um, mm -hmm. So looking at that every, in everyone's packet, it just describes those other uses. Um, and like I said, that did not pass. So those were the two items I included in there. Okay. What did the second one not pass by? Um, no, so it was the only, this one didn't pass. It was 199 to 103. 199 to 103. That was Article 36? Correct. Okay. Article 35, you didn't. Do, Article do you... 35 was in there just because it was on the same page. Oh, okay. Even though it's, see, one of the things that, I was hoping to do at some point in the next year is look at all of the related bylaws, and that includes this conversions of residential property bylaw that's very similar to the accessory family dwelling unit. Um, but but that's not what we're going to discuss tonight. So, um, and could I um, could I? Well, sorry, Peggy did say that she was out sick um, from work today and she didn't want to spread her germs, so that's why she hasn't joined us. Um, but I do know that the Zoning Advisory, I'm sorry, the Zoning Board of Appeals um, is the one who put this forward. Um, and in the past, um, basically what they wanted um, Zoning Advisory Committee to look at, including last year, was that... Um, but was that a lot of things come before them for a special permit and they just felt like we could provide more um, uh, flexibility for things to be done by right so it didn't have to come before the Zoning Board of Appeals. Would, would you say that's a fair assessment of, of what, the, what the issue is and why it's before us? You're talking about the, the conversion Ex or the accessory, or the accessory. accessory yes, family. The, yes, the accessory was to, to allow to allow it more by right because what people were doing was um, converting to the letter of the law, and which meant that that some of the creations were creative and <laughs> not really the may not be the best for the neighborhood or for the layout of the land that the people had. Okay. And I also recall this coming up last year is that um, some of the things for the accessory family dwelling unit that were a little restrictive in the way that it is written now, it had to do with the, there being an interior door between the two units, um, that there had to be a common wall instead of, you know, and sometimes the layout was such that it would be better if they were attached corner to corner or something along those lines. Um, but those were some of the things that came up last year that I recall. And Rhea and Ted, you were, you were on the Zach last year as well. Do you recall anything else? There was, um, I don't know if I'm, I'm conflating different discussions we have. There was talk of square footage. Um, and there was talk of pushing the square footage higher. Mm -hmm. um, 
distance from the main home, I think was a discussion we had. Um, but I think those were the, with, with what you had, those were the main issues, I think. I missed most of last year. I was okay. out sick. So I, I, I'm actually a recipient of an accessory use. I was one of the ones that, that got that when I built my house. And really, it was va very vague to me what, what actually happened. Because I don't have a door between where I built and where I, you know, the existing house was. I mean, it, it just, it, it didn't make any sense to me, so. Mm -hmm. Maybe some clarification on this. Well, did you have to go through the special permit process for that? Yes. Yep. yep. Um, and obviously, they provided you guidance and enough guidance to get this thing built. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But I didn't realize at the time that I actually got an accessory permit, mm. which was interesting. I just thought that I was just adding on to my house. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it was really interesting how I got it all, and, and it was told to me at the last year's meeting that I was one of the few people who actually had that oh. in my neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Well, I believe there's members of the public here that might want to discuss this issue. Would anyone like to come forward? I have a couple of concerns. I'm Tom Terry from 17 Maple Street. Come on, join us at the table. <laughs> six or seven of us, right? But then these people will get a fit. I couldn't hear what you were saying back there. Oh, I'm sorry. And normally I have such a loud voice. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, quite a few questions and different situations that could come up in this as far as uh, granddaughter uh, with her family or a grandmother with the family and uh, what happens if one moves out and and uh, say the granddaughter had established a relationship with someone and that person, could they stay? Uh, it, it just seems as though, without trying to enumerate all the possibilities, there's so many. I just think it should be studied uh, by a group and I think it should be, uh, conclusions should be drawn. And the other things that come up in addition to the, the bloodlines is, uh, what happens if the, some, somebody uh, sells the house? Now all of a sudden somebody comes in and he's got a house that can only be used unless, if fully used unless if he brings a relative with him or a, some kind of a situation that has been connected to that, to that principal owner. So uh, then there's situations of, uh, if all of a sudden the primary owner wanted to, to move out and get a better house or a more economical situation or move to Cape Cod or Florida or someplace, could he rent that while well, his grandmother was in there? So it becomes so cumbersome. Um, and who's going to police all this? I'm just wondering if you could make it simpler some way by having all... Uh, a blank, some kind of a blank ruling, blanket ruling around the whole that would cover any any and all situations. It would it would have to be very liberal. I realize that they may have some some uh, questions about do we want to do that. But I think this whole group is premised on the uh, the idea of what is best for the town. I mean, it's not what I think of personally, or you think of personally, or you think of personally. I think we're all here to to uh, what is best for the town in the long run. I was, I, I don't have any dog in the fight, so to speak. I used to own apartment houses I, for 70 years, 50 years, whatever it was. I managed uh, two or three down on Main Street and I've had other properties. So I've been a landlord and I know, I know how important it is to some of the people that lived there. I mean, there was times when the people really couldn't afford things and uh, they were a young couple and they had a, liking for the town through a relationship with a, their mother or father and they, they were coming back and you, so you had to bend, the, then bend, bend a little bit and help them out and maybe teach the guy how to mow the lawn or something. So you, there, there, were, there was ways of keeping these things, uh, keep, keeping them going. So I just think the whole process of whether they're duplexes or they're multifamilies or they're 
Um, accessory buildings, those are the three classifications you're looking at. If somehow they could be look at, looked at, it's, it's gonna be very difficult, but if they could be looked at as one, but with interest, first of all, you'd have to realize what is the what is the uh, the market for? Uh, who are we trying to target? Are we tra targeting? What are we going to do with the young, 18 to 25 year old people that are just coming out of college, and they want to they want to live in in town? Their parents lived here, still do. I, I know I'm getting off the subject a little as far as the accessory goes, but I think that's the reason we should look at the the whole thing. And then the same thing with the duplexes. And if, if, if somebody buys a lot of land, can they build a duplex? Can they build a triplex? Can they build a quad? And if so, what are the parking restrictions? What are the um, bedroom per unit restrictions? Uh, does, does because they're building, even, even though it might be in residence A, uh, with a 15,000 foot requirement, square foot requirement for the lot, if, it, if they wanted to put a three family on, maybe that could be extended out to 22.5, and then if it was a four family, it would come out to, to 30,000 square feet. Uh, but this is all too much to talk about sitting around this table tonight. But those are my thoughts on it. I think it's a, a very general thing that I think somebody <clears throat> has to sit down and, uh, I know Georgia is very adept at, at everything she does. I've found her since she's come to town seven or eight months ago, she's really terrific and she knows how to get information, she knows where it is, like, such as other towns' reports. And uh, I just think that uh, to make a hard and fast rule about one thing here tonight, without having the, the full concepts of what we're gonna do with the other two, might be a little bit, I mean, th this isn't a black and white boiler, boilerplate we're pulling out of a, a textbook. This is the town of Hopkinton and it's a town of what the Hopkin, town of Hopkinton needs for uh, housing. And this is an unusual, it's probably a 15% of the housing in the rental market as opposed to ownership, so it's maybe not the most important thing, but to the people that are gonna live there, it really is. That's all I got. Thank you. Through the chair, Mr. Terry, would you, do you, do you think that, let's focus on the accessory, family dwelling unit that we that's what we're talking about today do you think that if we pull if we just called an accessory dwelling unit would you know if we start to focus it on or broaden it to that to, to that spot um, as opposed to you know bring it into some kind of a family member or you know because we can't put ages in anymore because that's as far as real estate goes you can't can't do that you can't uh, say a grandmother or a grandfather or something like that. So I was just wondering, Rhea, when it comes to real estate, because you've been doing real estate longer well, this than I was, have. This was completely confusing to me when I did this in 2005, completely. Yes, but what, what, you know, um, what do we have to stay away from? Because when it, when it comes to real estate, there's certain so, things you can't even ask or talk about that we probably shouldn't even have in yeah, a- age. Yeah, all those things, but um, I think what Mr. Terry is talking about is is the difference between having an accessory unit for a family member versus renting it out different ways, whether it's an Airbnb or other things, right? Not an Airbnb, no, but another permanent tenant. Another permanent tenant, but see, it could turn into an Air Airbnb, that's what I'm thinking, it's like, as an accessory unit. So um, we touched on that last year, but we didn't, or is it two years ago now? But we didn't resolve it because it, the all that stuff is, keeps moving. Um, but- On the state law, I believe, for A, B, and B. There's, there's actually- the city. Well, John, to answer your question, um, this is something that needs a lot of study. There's no there's no yes or no to this. There's no, there's no okay. black and white answer tonight. Because, you know, you're living up on John David Road, and all of a sudden, the person next to you wants to make an accessory unit. And what their, their idea is to, to put on a little addition to their house and rent it to somebody. And so does the guy on the other side of you want to do the same thing. Now, what's Brenda going to say? 
I know, you know, don't you? Toilet store party? That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a consideration as opposed to the person who goes ahead and has an accessory grandmother and the grandmother passes on and now they have invested $40,000 to renovate that little area there and have a pass-through door or whatever, which I don't really think is legal or necessary, but that's beside the point. Um, now all of a sudden, that person is stuck with a tax bill with something that she can't utilize, here she can't utilize. So I don't have the answers, but I, have, I think the questions need some study. Well, these things, if I may throw the trigger again, mm -hmm. these, to, to these jump are things into that came up. a decision up. and throw it in front of the town meeting is, is not the way to do it. No, but these are the same, these are the same discussions that, that we had last year yeah. was also the same thing. But what if it's, what if it's a, a, a kid coming back from school? Does it have to? Because at one time, I think we actually did have somebody over, I think it had to be over 50 or over 60. I think we had in there, didn't it we? It was in it's a four. Right now. It's yeah. still or in the wording yeah. because oh. we haven't we obviously have to pull voted that out. any change. So... Yes. I, I understood the whole purpose of this particular proposal to town meeting was to allow families to bring in family members into their situation in their own space. It was not to, not to create units that were ultimately rentable to somebody unrelated to the family. It was, it was so that people would be able to take care of aging parents or younger children, not younger children, but you know, children starting out mm -hmm. in their own space on that property at a minimum, minimal expense for those people, not not to become a permanent residence, which is why the occupancy yeah. permit control was put in here. Yeah, and that's that looks so like that it what didn't the original a rental was. unit. Absolutely. But so. I think we just wanted to make it easier for people that wanted to bring their parents in to take care of their parents or, or whatever the situation was without having to go through a very arduous Zoning Board of Appeals process. Right. And that's my, that was my understanding of what the purpose was of this. It is a little bit onerous with the, the occupancy permit, but I think that prevents what was frightful to the people on both sides of you who are, you know, building these units and then renting them out and now you're living in a rental area and that's what I thought the the purpose of this was. So Yes, Mr. Trendle. Hi, Gary Trendle, thirty one Chamberlain Street, and I was on the zoning advisory committee last year. And I thought it might just be worth giving a little bit more history. I know there's a number of people here that were as well. Um, I think there were a couple of things that we were trying to address. Um, one was from a square footage perspective. Um, and just as a point of reference, um, I haven't been in very many of these. I've been in Tom's sister's apartment on Chamberlain Street, which by the way does not, um, which actually is, is beyond the, I think 600 to 650 square feet. It's not a big apartment, um, but I just think that's, you know, they had to go to the, the Board of Appeals to get that built and it was a complex process. and. At the end of the day, when you look at it, it is a small one-bedroom apartment. So um, anyways, that was objective number one was, you know, can we increase the size of this to make it uh, a more appropriate sized apartment for either, you know, someone who's, whose children live in town with families of their own and, you know, maybe they have a place in Florida or someplace else but want to be here five to six months out of the year and how can we give them some, something reasonable to live in? Um, the second piece of it was this requirement of having a, a pass-through door, and we had a lot of discussion around whether we should require it to be connected to the house or not. Um, and I think there was a lot of just contention because there was, again, concern that people start building compounds and, you know, she sheds and um, whatever else, you know, outbuildings and whatnot, which, which was certainly a concern. Um, but I will say that, that we did a lot of, um, you know, Jennifer Burke did a lot of research and looking at other towns, and I don't know if this board has looked at that or not, but they actually went and pulled standards from other towns, and I think there are some ways to address those concerns. Um, some of the things that we talked about last year was, you know, putting a, a maximum on it or a percentage of the total square footage. So the whole idea that, that with an accessory dwelling that you should have a, you shouldn't have two units of the same size that one of them should be a certain size and the smaller one should be maybe a, a maximum of one third of that size so that you always have this, 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 this primary and this secondary, which I think um, might avoid some of the issues. Um, 
you know, I think the occupancy pieces, we, again, we also talked about, you know, are there ways that we can link this back to um, dependents or, you know, either, you know, um, you know, blood relative or dependent. Um, but I think, I, I guess what I, what I don't remember exactly is really what all the objections were at town meeting here. And if I recall, I feel like it was in, in general just a concern about these turning into to multi units and rentals and, and what happens um, if the property sells or you know somebody passes away, then then what are they going to do with it? And and that's where, to me, I think that's a really. I mean, at the end of the day, this didn't pass town meeting last year, and I I think it's probably really important to understand why it didn't pass because if we don't, if you as a group don't address that this year, then it's just it, it's likely to, to fall suit to the to the same thing. Um, and so, so lastly, I guess I'd just say that I, I am an advocate for making changes to the, to the accessory dwelling law. I think that in this day and age, I think particularly as Hopkinton can be a difficult place for some, place from, for some people to afford, it gives an option for people that want to be close to their kids. My parents are in California. I, I wish that they would consider an accessory dwelling at my house because it would make things a lot easier for all of us. And my last point is with regards to renters. I think there's a lot of fear of renters. Um, at the end of the day, all of us were renters at one point. So just want to remind everyone of that, that um, you know, maybe that's not the best description of what's good and bad, um, but maybe there's, there's some other ways to, to, to protect property owners and protect their homes without you know, alienating renters. So, thank you. Gary raises a good point, and it might really be worth us sitting down and looking at the discussion that occurred around this proposal to find out what exactly the objections were. I agree. And and Mr. Terry's points as well, um, in order to look at all of the related um, bylaws that I found very confusing. We, we I think, uh, <laughs> proposed changing two of them last year, but I'm like, why are there even multiple ones? Obviously, that happens over time. You know, people mm -hmm. add bylaws and don't change the old ones. Um, so I, I would really love to see it cleaned up, if, if um, you know, and clarified. Um, so, but I think it does take more time. Is there any other members of the public who wanted to comment on this particular topic? Okay. Um, my proposal is that we table this um, to do more research, get more background, and then probably put it on an agenda for just by itself and just talk about it in yeah, a very systematic maybe, way. Maybe, um, it, um, to Carol's point, look at... Um, so town, town meeting? Town meeting. Town meeting. Yeah, so, so is there... A script or a, mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there videos? That's all, all recorded by uh, yeah. HCAM. Yeah. We could get it from HCAM. So we can have a, a little yeah, popcorn party and watch YouTube. We can YouTube that. Oh, yeah. No, we can do that for one of the YouTube. meetings. Yeah. It, it, it sends up, it Not sends a bad up. idea. Beyond my capabilities. Okay. Well, that's, maybe we, that's we should also study some other towns that have this description better than we have. Yeah. And and um, who said? I can't remember who said. But Gary had said um, Jen had, had a lot said, of stuff. Jen had stuff from last year. She yeah. can resurrect that. So we just uh, need to, to look for that and any other. So any other comments? No? Okay. Uh, excuse me, yes. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking also at this, this group, we're we'll looking at uh, the duplexes and the triplexes. That's, that's what I want to do yeah. is that, like look great. at all of those. That's, that's really constructive. Yeah. And try to clarify all of those and yeah. consolidate them maybe into one article so that, yeah. So you need to pull it all together, then you need to come together. And make it have clear. Agenda, yeah. Have a meeting, have a discussion. Yep. That, that's, that's my. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Something to look forward to in the new year. <laughs> okay. Sorry, my computer just went to sleep. Okay, so next on our agenda has to do with a commercial um, industrial A district. And the um, proposal is to allow car wash facilities by right in the industrial A district. Industrial A is 
the South Street. South Street. South Street. South Street area. Mary, are there any members that didn't get a copy of a zone map that would like one? I didn't. Save some extra. John wants one. Thank I, you, Georgia. I have a laminated uh, one, but I, I didn't bring it. My, I, brought, I brought my wife's car. Yeah. Yes, I got it. Thank you. Mine's set up as a truck right now. You know what, Georgia? Hold on to this one for the next time we, we forget. <laughs> Good idea. Okay. So the proposal is. Yeah, it sounds too. And this was from, oh, I don't remember who proposed it. Scott. Was it Scott? And Sup support, supported, by the, supported by the chamber. Supported Cham by the chamber. Yeah, chamber. Um, and I think could the largest sticking point could be the drive through aspect um, in terms of town meeting. Um, well, does anyone drive have history? The only drive through that, we, that, we, that people had problems with this was food drive through Yeah, because I consider a drive through car wash very different than a food drive through yeah. just my personal. Just for background. Yeah, what's the, what's the history on the drive through Does anybody know? <laughs> just to keep the chains Sandy. out. Sandy. Just to keep the chains out? <laughs> Um, primary, well, yes, and trash down, and there's a lot of, there were a lot of negatives associated with drive-through food things, but primarily, um, I think there was a reluctance to have a Burger King or McDonald's and all its associated trash that went with it um, in Hopkinton, I think is the, that was really the it. long and short of it. Yeah. Um, yes, sorry. I don't, sorry. Sorry, Madam Chair, can I just comment on that? Because two things, one, we, um, <laughs> we, we do allow um, drive-throughs for banks. Mm -hmm. um, and, and secondly, uh, and pharmacies. And secondly, I believe that, that car washes uh, are currently allowed in the downtown district, I yes. believe. Business it's district and the downtown. Sorry, business district and, and downtown district. So this isn't a function. I don't think this is a debate about whether or not car washes are allowed at all. It's a function of whether car washes are allowed in the uh, industrial. In a, in a place that could actually fit them and not be, not be obtrusive. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't think I, think, I think the no drive through is totally food related. I don't think it has to okay. do with any, anything From else. talking to Elaine, she did note that uh, previous concerns were large lines of queuing, people waiting to get into the drive through uh, to go through if it spills onto the roadway. Considering it is allowed by special permit in the downtown, I mean, one could go in right now. Right. Um, and the impacts of long lines of people waiting to get in. But by special permit, Correct. so they would have to explain why they're not going to have long lines clogging the street. <coughs> yep. But industrial in industrial A, um, it clearly wouldn't be as big an issue to have longer lines. But uh, I would still not like to see it queuing up on streets. So. But then again, it, to to put in a, a car wash now, uh, it averages about two and a half million dollars. So anybody that's going to put in put an investment like that in. Uh, I'm sure would want to make sure that they have enough queuing space so well, that. Uh, regardless of what it is, you'd still have to go through site plan review, right? Right. And you'd still have to show that it was a safe site. So, am I am I? I'm correct in that statement, correct? Yes. Yeah. It'll, it'll so, be queuing's not an issue at this point. I have issues with putting it in as a by right, but it has nothing to do with queuing. I have, oh, go ahead. I have air pollution worries about queuing. I think the most popular car wash time is the winter where you're gonna sit in your car running because you want the heat on while you wait for the cars to go through. Um, that's a concern I have. And Carol, I was gonna ask you. What my concerns are? Yeah. Uh, well, my concerns are primarily that I, th I think we have long term a large problem with quantity of water in this town and i think to to make a car wash a by right use is um, not necessarily the best thing i think this area is very close to um, maspinock and i'm not sure how the water flows so i would be concerned about impacting the watershed to maspinock um, if you put, wanted to put it in there, I think I would be perhaps amenable to special permit, but not as a by right. I think it's by right gives it too much um, 
in its favor for being approved before you actually look at the impacts of doing it. To Ted's point, there, you know, you've got queuing, you've got air, there's a, there's a whole bunch of community concerns, I think, that in my mind that would go with a by right car wash, that if it's by right, you just don't have control over. So I, I would be willing to see it as a special permit item, not as a by right item. If I may, the, the new car washes, that's one what, what of the reasons why they're so expensive to build is because this, they're, they're somewhere between 95 and 98 percent efficient at, re, re, at reclaiming the water. That's one of the things that that's what, because that was always one of the main concerns is that they wasted water. Mm -hmm. That's true, but if you put it in as a by right thing, you're not putting any specifications as to what type car wash. It could be, you know, four hoses next to a building. You, if you just make it a buy right, you've got no regulation over it. You, you can't say it needs to be a 95% efficient with recycling water. You can't, you, you can't can put we, restrictions can put on the, it. Could we put that as, as conditions for a, for a car wash, though, in the, in the bylaw? You couldn't as, as a special permit. I don't think you can do it in this bylaw because the technology is, is going to constantly change. My biggest concern in this is when, when I look at the uses by right that are currently there, mm -hmm. we're not putting any of those kinds of concerns or restrictions on a manufacturing facility who could be using all kinds of water and, and things. So I, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to put some equity into the system of saying if we're allowing these by right in an industrial area, why are we going to restrict another one that could be more efficient than what's already allowed by right? It, and not to debate back and forth, but my response to your question is that, that there were a number of things that zoning has allowed in the past that we've put in um, that maybe we wouldn't allow now. I know a lot of the things that we did through Zach in the past have been by special permit, and we looked, when we looked at pharma pharmaceuticals, Right, and look, putting them in certain areas, we looked at the water usage. Um, I, I understand what you're saying, hmm. but if you have something that, you know, if you brought those to me now, I, I might say, okay, those are fine, I'm okay with that. If you did it by special permit, I don't think it should be in a, by right use. So I don't think we should base our decisions on history. You had something too, right, Liz? Oh, I, yes, just a small comment. Okay, um, we'll come back to you. Uh, Mary, um, basically, I'm disappointed in myself. Last time we were here, I couldn't debate or construct a, an argument the way I should have regarding the statement of adding uses to industrial A and industrial B, all right? Basically, an industrial zone is an industrial zone. If you take a use that's not an industrial use and you stick it in the industrial zone, it should have a special permit. The in, either that or you completely rename the zone. And maybe that's what we should be talking about because we're adding all these different, different uses into the zone. And I think that the town of Hopkinton really needs to know that this is no longer going to be an industrial zone. It's going to be a car wash zone or it's going to be a trade school zone or it's going to be this zone, an entertainment zone or whatever. Those aren't industrial uses. And the reason why, and Elaine said it the last time we were here, the reason why they didn't allow big box retail here when it was hot in the 90s is because they wanted to offer the opportunity for companies like EMC to develop on South Street. If we take all that land and we put it into entertainment or retail or restaurant or this or that, all these non-industrial uses, basically we won't have an EMC with high paying jobs. We'll have low paying service jobs. And I'm a commercial broker, I've been doing this for 30 years, and when I go into a town and I'm looking for a use, if there's a specific area in that town that says, I require a special permit, I will tell the client, you, this town requires a special permit to be in the zone. Nine out of 10 times, they say, that's not a big deal. We have a great argument. If the town wants us, we'll pursue it. This is not about anti-business. This is about choosing the right way of making this work. And right now, we're just adding things to an industrial zone, which, by the way, I know some of the people on this committee have not been here very long, but the folks at Maspinock, at Lake Maspinock, were there long before EMC was. 
So it's not like they chose the industrial zone to be right next to them. It grew up next to them. All right, so it's not like they're not here at the table right now, but you know what? At town meeting, they will be there. It will not pass. So either we define what industrial uses are, because when I look at our bylaws, we do not have a clear definition of industrial A and industrial B. We have this glowing like overview of what design should be, but it's not a definition. I have definitions from Franklin right now for all different you know zones in their town, very similar to Hockington, exactly the same square miles as Hockington, all right? And they could, we could be as big as Franklin. They've got 33,000 people, we've got 15,000 people. We basically could be as big as Franklin, but we've chose not to be because we don't have a train system. We don't have a college. But these are the things that, that you know, they figured out a while ago, and we have not. We, our, our, our zoning is a mess. When I look at the definitions and everything like that for industrial A and industrial B. Do you have any comments? Um, I have a question for Rhea, mm -hmm. I may. Um, I'm just curious because I don't really know anything and you seem to know a lot. Is there a big, in, is there a big need for all this industrial space? Like, is it just kind of wasted land, just calling it industrial? It's not wasted. Um, there is a, a business cycle that happens all the time in this town. This town is primed to be the Westin of 495. It has all the great highway access, close to colleges, close to major cities that you could ever want. The reason it hasn't had the, the, the bump is because we have certain property owners that have not organized um, and, you know, clearly they are in transition. Elm Street was, uh, Elmwood Park was, you know, I don't know, more than 70% vacant a couple of years ago. It's full now. This is going to happen with South Street as soon as they fix the buildings. But it's like, you've got to allow those property owners to come to the table, and they haven't yet. But it's not because people don't want to be there. So there is there is a there is a demand for it? there is demand to be okay. in Hockington. Okay, that's what I was just wondering. Yeah. Because one of the things, if I make to the chair, mm, one of the things that I'm thinking about is business parks. How big business parks used to be, um, 20, 25 years ago when I was in business, and now there's just people are working from home. People don't don't need the office space. And uh, so I'm just wondering, if, you know, because that, that's that's sort of what's happening to us also up on, on South Street. You know, we are lucky enough that, that there is a company that hopefully, um, if we can work work with them, we were just talking about it at the uh, Sport of Selectman meeting the other day, if um, um, they have the right incentives that we may get in, a, get a, a, a research firm to move in, move it in up on South Street. But you know we we've really got to work hard. You know there there are towns around us, Marlboro, or Marlboro's I like guess the city. They have whole teams that are, that are out trying to sell their commercial base. You know what what you know when we're but way John, under twenty percent right now. I have to tell you, Marlboro has said no to so many different uses recently, and one of my clients was told no, and they're trying to figure it out too. But there's a lot of political stuff going on in Marlboro. I'm, I'm expressing that Franklin, the, all the towns on 495 are hot to trot. If you've got the right site that a company is looking for, you will get that deal. We have everything in place for those companies, but we are competing against a huge amount of new construction in the city. You go, have you ever seen the thing called Crane Watch? You know, go on there and you go, oh my God, there's a crane there, there's a crane there, there's a crane there. I mean, there are so we have, many, we have a crane here in Hopkinton. There's so many buildings under construction in the city. It's just sucking everything from the suburbs right now. That's going to change. It's about to change because the cost of being in the city is so high. So, yes, Marlboro, Marlboro had a specific developer who started the, the transition over there. And then another developer came in and it started the ball rolling. 
We don't have that one developer who will do that right now because we don't have this huge, massive amount of land. We don't. We are very much in good, con we are in very good condition for the future. Okay, so. So what my point is, John, is that we need to identify whether or not this is an industrial zone or is it some other zone? Because if we keep adding all these other uses that are not industrial uses, no one's gonna recognize it as an industrial zone. And a special permit is not. It's not a big deal. It's not a, you know, it's not a hard it's not a big deal why, don't we, why don't we just change the by right to special permit then? Well, because we already voted on two things last meeting where I couldn't, for whatever reason, I could not understand how to communicate it to you is that you're still taking zones that are industrial zones and you're adding uses that are not industrial uses. And we need those industrial uses because they lead to higher paying jobs. No, I, I agree with what you're saying, but like for instance, one of the things that we voted on last time to make by right was an educational or a, a facility, which uh, if it's an industrial, if it's a company like EMC, and I, as a working mom, if there is a daycare in that industrial zone, I'd be more interested in coming to the job because there is a, there is a daycare that's close by. So. We allow that. We allow that. Already. No, that we no, just we added it. We just said, we just daycare, put daycare. Daycare. Right. It was. It was. It was education. For vocation, education, and vocation. Educational and vocation. So that's I, that different. That's daycare. not daycare. Oh. Right. No, but, but there's but daycare, daycare is covered under like the Dover okay. Amendment, and that is literally, which I did not understand until Elaine said it to me three times. <laughs> Basically, you, you know, no anywhere. zoning ordinance or bylaw in any city or town shall prohibit or require a special permit for the use of land or structure or the expansion of existing structures for the primary accessory or incidental purpose of operating a child care facility. So it is allowed. No, no, I get that, but I'm, that was just an example. I'm saying, like, there, if, say, for instance, if I am in an industrial zone and there is something, like, for instance, the health club and and uh, if which is currently allowed and landscaping business, which is currently allowed, I can at least make a connection of why a health club is allowed in an industrial zone because the employees maybe want to take a break, go work out, and then come back to office. So. Maybe some of them fit there, some of them don't. We just maybe not. But if they, they, they can, and, they no, can no, a car, wash, a car wash to me is perfect for it because it's another amenity. One of the things you're re when you look for restaurants and it's some other things. It's not an industrial and, use. And it can all fit there, but it can fit there by special permit. And to okay. Ria's point, if you have an industrial zone, your industrial zone should be oh. industrial. No, I, I'm not arguing the, the by right part. No, no, I totally get it. D d no, by a special permit's fine. I was just. I, I think we're we're all on the same same page. Uh, now we're just. Uh, uh, I thought we we're arguing a whole different thing, saying no completely, because you know it's it's definitely a better spot than than where it's where it is right now downtown. But that's also a special permit, so we should just carry it over. Right, but to the point of last uh, meeting, where I did not debate this very eloquently, <coughs> um, I'm saying that. When we start adding all these uses to an industrial A or an industrial B, which doesn't really have a definition under our bylaws, we should be defining what those industrial A and B zones are. <laughs> because otherwise, it's just going to be, we're going to be adding things to these zones. So we need to come up with a better solution, or you know, we're going to be screwing around with a zone that people don't understand by the title of it. So, point of order yeah. question. Yes. Um, if I was here last week, I, w I would not have supported putting those in as by right. And I think based on what Rhea has, you know, her argument that she's given today, I think maybe some people might consider it differently. So, is there a way to reconsider last week's vote on making those by right uses? Well, I personally industrial? don't think that they apply. I mean, this is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think, I think, you know, I think your argument um, has, has some weight regarding the car wash, but I think the vocational and educational situation, that was, that was a good 
decision last week. And but you know, what is this? Entertainment. I don't think the entertainment. No. It I mean, was, we didn't do entertainment. We did uh, oh, indoor we did. recreational yeah. use. That's completely different than entertainment. No, there were three things that you Bugs. added. Maybe I misread the minutes. Indoor recreation uses, indoor educational recreation vocational uses. schools, and retail uses, which are accessory to manufacturing yeah. use. We did not do an entertainment venue. Uh, we didn't do that one. Uh, I think that I, I must have read the indoor recreation as the apex, go-karting and stuff. So. Because we were talking about throwing axes, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't there last sorry, week. I also me. would have voted against Hang those on. being by right a, a week ago had I been here. I, I think that this board, by its actions, is actually defining what an industrial A or an industrial B is by saying, in industrial A, we're going to permit this by right. So that, that's the process. If, if we come up with a, with a very finite definition of what it is, we're really limiting the ability of, of the town to move and react to, to things that are out there. So I, I think we I have defined it. And we've defined it by saying, we want these amenities in areas that are not residential so that we can better attract businesses to come. And business, I mean, that's all types of businesses. And, and it, But that doesn't work in zoning, I mean, there are different uses for different zones, and that's why we have a zoning map. But again, um, I, I would say that in the industrial A, industrial B, the, the business district and professional office district, you know, the way we have our zoning set up right now, it is not at all clear that industrial means industrial because when i go down south street i see a lot of office uses i see just general businesses um there's no nothing industrial about them there's they're we just a, a box a, a business there's Church. churches there yes there's, churches are allowed anywhere no i understand yeah, no I but i'm just no i'm just saying it, it, it's a mixture of things it's a mixture of businesses it's not just manufacturing it's not heavy manufacturing emc the emc stuff is not is an office building there's, you know, there's, it's a big office building. Um, and so it's, uh, I don't think that a lot of the things we've been discussing are all that different than that. But so, then we should be defining this as not an industrial zone, it should be can, a commercial zone. And let's, let's no. go to town meeting with a de new definition of what this industrial zone A is and see how we go. If I may through the chair, yes. Carol, you remember? trying to add the word residential to the agricultural district. We got through that in two minutes in Zach. Oh, we're just gonna add the word residential to agricultural so that when people want to, re people want to, want to uh, redo their loans, that they don't have to wait an extra week to have that to people go through it. In reality, they're both almost identical. And at town meeting, it was about 45 minutes, and people were saying, we are, we're a rural community, we're an agricultural community, we're a farming community. You cannot add words residential to, the, to agricultural. Agricultural is agricultural. And it was just a simple change, and it didn't go through. Sandy and I were just laughing about it. Actually, you were with us at the time. And we just couldn't believe it. So we have to be very careful when we go to try and redefine right. stuff that it's, uh, unless we're great salespeople, it's, they're not going to get it. That's to my point, John, is that the, we're, we're talking about defining what industrial A and industrial B is, and we're putting in a lot of non-industrial uses into those zones. We should be renaming those zones then, because otherwise, that's not what they reflect. Yes, Carol. If, if you look at the zoning bylaw and you look at what's, what's permitted by right, and then you look at the section that's allowed by special permit, the special permit stuff is stuff that, that maybe you would consider amenities or beyond, but the, the basic definition of what's allowed in the zone by right is, follows a certain quality of industrial uses. Yes. Yes, and that's the way most towns are. So do we have a motion about the car wash situation? So, okay, so, it's, so we can go on to the next one. I, I I'll make a motion that we um, put forth to the planning board um, 
the allowance of car wash facilities, automated self-service drive-through. I'm sorry, can I stop you for a moment? Yes. Because, I'm sorry, did you want to comment on this? Well, actually, I had a comment about, I think, what Rhea said about uh, the Dover Amendment. The Dover Amendment um, protects educational and religious, not child care. So when you think of child care like the Golden Goose Academy that was at Golden Goose, that's not, that's not protected by that. That's what the Dover Amendment that's is. That's not the statute, though. That's not it the, is. No. It is. It is the statute. I pulled it up today. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, John. That's fine. Okay. So, again, um, this is this is I'd like to put forth to the planning board um, from That's Zach to allow car wash facilities, automated self service, drive through uh, by special permit in the industrial aid district. Second. Hold on. I can't hang here. Sorry. He's made a motion. Oh, I, just re I just repeated it. No, I, got, I didn't I know. I changed the one word. Maude, who seconded. Okay. No, oh, he, he did. John did. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. I'm glad I reacted. Sorry, go ahead, John. So the motion has been made for a special permit use in Industrial A or Industrial A and B? Just Industrial A? It just says Industrial A is all mm -hmm. people are asking for. It. Okay. Do you want to talk Further about discussion? Industrial B? No. I will be voting no. I think once we decide that amenities for business is what is required, then anything in the world can be an amenity. And then we lose what Rhea tells us. The whole point was high paying jobs, high paying salaries. Amenities can be anything that makes life better, which means pretty much any business in there ought to be allowed by a special permit. And that's not the goal of what that district was. And I think a car wash is a long way away from an amenity for business. Okay. Any other discussion? So, can I, can I just put on Kathy Sherry? Obviously, not going to be brought this forward. Um, are you just discussing car wash or are the self storage facility is also grouped into here? Because there no. were two just current, car wash. Two requests. Just so the just car, car wash. washes, and then you will discuss the self storage then. Did, did he face it? So, uh, speaking of uh, how, well, how to distinguish between industrial A and industrial B, maybe the distinction is that one of the industry, in one of the zones is a stricter represent implementation of industrial zone so we don't add too many things by right there and another one is more flexible that ends up being the difference between industrial a and industrial b if you look at the differences on the zoning map we've got um i can't tell exactly where the pink part is that's rural business versus the purple, which is industrial B. <laughs> Does anybody know where the different, where the line of differences? Because there's a lot of retail in rural that area. Business, rural business is, is right here. This is rural business. Yeah. This one, but right? what about this part is, here? Rural business is a really small one. But what about this it's here? Business. This 500 this feet is from, this is pink. you know, where the Oh. It looks like Basically, where that um, 110 grill and the, yeah, that that's mall. rural business. Yeah. But not uh, that's think, in the rural the, business district. I think that that's mixed I use though. The 110 grill. That's the, all different. The, the definitions that we have for our zones. Ria, I'm sorry. So, if, do, do you have you know? Help, can you help us on so that? This is mixed on use. The, on the zone. The zone differences here. Uh, uh, rural I'm, business. See. The yeah, rural businesses in is terms of West where Main they Street. are or what they yes. what their definition is. No, in terms of where they are, first of all, because then we can at least. So yeah, the rural visualize. business is a transitional zone between business and residential. So you'll see it next to, um, like on Elm Street, where the Dunkin' Donuts is today. That's in rural business. Yes. Okay. But that it looks color, like it, it looks like it goes all the way down West Main Street. <clears throat> To Golden Pond. To oh, Golden to, Pond. Right. So mm -hmm. there's a bunch of houses in there. Right. Okay. So those are in rural business district, but they're, they're houses. And then on the other side, so the south side, um, that's the Unibank. Right. There's, and, yeah. and some of those. It's roughly 500 feet that it looks like is 
off of West Main Street. So how far is 500 feet in 10 football fields? It's about the 77 West Main Plaza, mm -hmm. so where Dynasty and Hiller's Pizza are, and then where we put in on Lumber Street is the neighborhood mixed use. So the line is kind of right through the front <coughs> there. Right. And Union Bank and Starbucks is in the rural district. Right, okay. And then the purple, farther to south, to the south there, um, doesn't have a lot of building on it. Would you say there's, uh, you know, there's that? Actually, there is several businesses mechanic. there. Um, there's the landscaping place, and there's wetlands. And there's yeah, wetlands. and there's Lumber Street Auto is in right. there. Yeah, right? the, the yeah. auto place. Yep. Yeah. There's. Yeah. Yep, and that's right. McIntyre. And then there's the Sportsman Club somewhere in there. Or is that on the... I think that's further down. That's, it's a little further down? I think. Okay. It is a little further down. Okay. It's just beyond the yeah, it's, 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 neighborhood it's, mixed use. Oh, really? It's all the way down there? Okay. It's, it's, it's that whole thing. Okay. Okay. So, so in my opinion, Industrial B doesn't have much space for things like car washes, right? Um, it doesn't. It's in the middle of everything, so. Yeah. Could I speak to the motion? Yes. Which is special permits that are currently allowed in Industrial A include conference centers with or without a residential dormitory, veterinary clinics, auto and truck repair, uh, facilities for storage of gasoline, recycling centers, continuing care retirement communities. I don't see any of those that, that this town has adopted as being industrial uses that are currently allowed in the industrial A section by use. So um, I just want to kind of point back to Ted's point of saying, you know, if once we allow this accessory use, then we've opened Pandora's box. It's, it's already, we're, it's wide open. So I'm, I'm just trying to understand the logic of saying, these are all allowed by special permit. These are all allowed by right, but we're not gonna allow this because it's not industrial. That doesn't make any sense to me. Thoughts? My answer would be, I wasn't here to vote on the other ones. I would have voted against them probably as well. I think that if, in my opinion, mistakes were made in the past, it doesn't mean we should keep repeating the mistake. Or if a use was already there when zoning was put in place to kind of group things together, that's why those things were identified in that zone. And that's more likely the case. No. Yes, please. Is the opinion of this board that we should not have a car wash in Hopkinton and if that's the case you know I don't agree with that but that would be a different thing because if we're you know what sitting on the Chamber of Commerce Economic Development Council when we're talking to businesses about coming here it's what John said we're looking for more amenities that we don't have in town so where are we if we're not going to put them in the industrial A industrial B zones where are we going to put them or do we just say, not welcome in Hopkinton? They're potentially the, the downtown. You know, if a lot opened up in the downtown, like we had said earlier, and CBA believes they can issue the special permit, that's where it would go, business district or the downtown district. Yeah, and it has, I, I think that would be the worst place in the world to have a car wash. I that's would agree. I, I don't disagree with that. But. <laughs> I, I personally would would possibly recommend that that we um, that we recommend wording to change that to not allow it in the downtown business district, but rather to allow it in you know the 495 area. So, my my only opposition, which is would would have been the same opposition as I would have had last week to the items that you put in as use as right is I'm okay if you want to put it down there as a special permit. I don't think it should be a buy right. So if the motion is to allow it as a special permit, I would support that. 
Well, that's that was the, the motion. That's the motion. That's the motion. That's been seconded. I would support that. It's already eight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any further discussion on this point? All right, let's take a vote. All in favor of the motion, um, and that would be to allow by special permit in industrial A car washes with the other wording in our agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 That was one, two, three, four, six, seven. Nay? Nay. Any abstentions? Okay. That's like right. town meeting. We go for 40 minutes and we have a seven to one. Okay. Could we have a motion to reconsider the others? Um, so we will yeah, what is the, the language? Well, it doesn't really, it, it's, it's going to the planning board already. It's, it's just going up to the planning board. The planning board can switch it up. Anything. Okay. Just tell me I don't when wanna, I should be there. I'm sorry, I only had two hours. Just tell me when I should today. be there. Okay. <laughs> yes, Gary. Okay. Uh, Gary Turner, 31 Champlain Street. Can I just make a suggestion? Um, and that's it along with this, if this is, since this passed, I'd also recommend to your point, removing it from or excluding it from the downtown district. And I think that when this goes to town meeting, that might actually increase the likelihood of people getting behind this. If they feel like it's a swap and you're just moving the, the potential for a car wash from one location, which is probably less desirable to one that is potentially more desirable. So it might be kind of a trade that, that might help something like this get through town meeting. Thank you. Anyone have any thoughts on that? I think that's an incentive. We should think about that because we are looking to beautify our downtown. And mm -hmm. Any others? I, my only concern with changing zoning of a, of a property, that business owner is having something, potentially having something taken away from them. And I don't, you know, I, I don't, I'm not an attorney. I have no idea what the legality of that is, but that property owner owned that with a certain zoning and taking it. I mean, I think it's well, a great idea. I, I think it's a great various. idea, and perhaps you could talk to the owner and say, "Would you would you consider giving that up?" Blah blah blah. But well, you've just increased the value of all those people on Industrial A by giving them that added benefit that when they bought they didn't have. So giving somebody something is one thing, taking it away is another thing. Anyway. My, I understand what you're saying. My, my honest response to that is if there's a business owner in the business district that's upset that this is leaving his list of possible things he can do with his property, then he will come to town meeting and plead his case. Yeah, because I mean, I think of car wash adjacent to a fuel station is the, would be the concern if we did take it away from that. That's the only thing that I'm. That was, that was one of the main reasons of, yeah. sorry, through the um, chair for, for that uh, was for our downtown um, fuel station that's right there. He was gonna put that on several years ago. That's the way I understand it. Mm -hmm. Well, the. Georgia, can you tell us when car washes went into that district as a option? I'm not sure. I'll look though. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Because it looks like if he could buy the lot behind him, then he would have enough space to do the. I mean, I know that the it's. You talking about the DX1 station? Yeah. He'd have enough space to do a car wash there. While George is looking for some of that information, I would like to move on to the self-storage facilities so that we can get through that tonight. We have a member of the public here to, to give input. Um, and the proposal on the table was to allow self-storage facilities for residential and commercial use by right in the industrial A district. Um, and you know we can discuss whether we would consider this by right or by special permit. Um, open it up for comments. This is a use that uh, <coughs> normally is in a commercial district, not an industrial zone. It wasn't, if I may, wasn't your comment a few minutes ago to rename this a commercial district? 
Well, yeah, but we haven't gotten there I yet. know. But, okay, I mean, exactly. if we keep adding all these uses, John, that are commercial uses, <clears throat> they're not exclusively industrial into industrial zone, we should rename the zone. And now you told me that it's too hard to get a zone renamed at town meeting, but literally you're like, you're, you're creating a district that's not industrial anymore. So, so may I make, may I make a, 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 a motion? Could we, uh, how about putting it up to the planning board to change the name of industrial A to commercial? Second that. Let's let's try it. Well, I mean, let's try because, it. Let's, if because otherwise, it, otherwise, what we're doing is we're doing one unit, right. one one use after another that doesn't fit in the industrial zone, and either you do get do it by a special and permit. And frankly, you know, and I you I, have I, to agree, I don't think it is an industrial zone exclusively right now. I think it's. It I'd is love manufacturers to come back, but we have. Right. There's no manufacturing up there. I know. I'm a manufacturing engineer. I was I was looking for a job for a long time. <laughs> so yeah, I think that reflects what it is. It's commercial. And if that's what the town wants, that's what the town should get. But I'm just I've been pointing this out because as a as a um, category, we're we're messing with what that category actually yeah. states. And we, since we don't have a real definition for industrial A or industrial B. It's kind of like lost. We can just add whatever we want and just vote on it and say whatever we want, but it's, it doesn't reflect what it, that title is. To, to your point, I believe that you're correct, but if you name that a commercial zone, it's never going to fly. Without changing anything else? doesn't matter. It's never going to fly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, if you call it commercial, we're going to have strip malls and we're going to have this and, and that. And that's and my point. And my point and is that we don't have definitions don't want of this okay. particular but that's, zone. That's the picture that gets painted in people's heads when you put commercial on it. Right, which is why, well, how about, how why about Elaine calling said... It professional? Well, Elaine said last meeting that the reason why big box retail was excluded from industrial is because they wanted to protect the businesses that were higher paying job businesses yes. because the big box retailers were just taking over all of these right. industrial markets okay yes and but okay and, and this again this is my non-commercial real estate definition you know in my head um, there's the professional offices, there's industrial, which is more manufacturing, which even if, though it's called industrial in our zoning has never meant that um, in what I've seen on the ground. Um, and then there's retail, which is completely different. Again, to me, it is different than office, than self-storage, I don't see in a retail, I see it in an area that is not good for retail because you don't want self-storage to be in a high traffic area. You would want it to be accessible, but you don't want it to be like taking up prime real estate. Well, you want that, it to be tell that to the, to the storage people that call me all the time and say, Take, give me your prime real estate for self-storage. And, I, I, don't, okay. and I don't see self-storage And they will pay for it. Enough. That's what I'm saying is that, so there's got to be some kind of def definition of what we're trying to do in this particular zone because all we call it is IA and IB, but it's not either of those. And it, there was manufacturing there and there's still software development and stuff like that, today's manufacturing. But, you know, it's, it has changed. It's time for us to relook at this yeah. and define it. And it has changed. So that we're not, I mean, to John's point the last time, we don't want to have to require everyone to have a special apartment because it's another hurdle. Not that it's a big hurdle in our town, but because it's not the right zone. That was the reason I, I felt terrible that I was not able to communicate that in the last meeting. Yeah, but I, I don't think that most people in this town think of Industrial A as like, oh no, it has to be, that that's what it's called and that that's what it, it means. I mean, I really think that- But that's what businesses look at. I understand that, but that's, I really don't think that's what the residents look at because again, I'm speaking as a lay person and my definition is, oh, okay, going down South Street, I look at the buildings, I figure out what it means to me in my head and it's not industrial.
To me, it's I, not industrial when I, <clears throat> when I drive there. So it doesn't matter what it's called on our zoning map. It's but, more what my eyes But that's see. what our bylaws say. I know, I'm, I'm saying yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. just my layperson. I'm sorry, that's go okay. ahead. I just wanted to um, make an amendment to John's proposal mm -hmm. that maybe we rename it a business district because the word commercial frightens people and business doesn't imply strip malls or heavy retail, but business is much more of a broad term that could entail some of the things we're talking about, but also still maybe some of the things that would be considered industrial, but it would be bigger businesses, but it's still business. Well, that might be, have to be a business, of, 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 sorry, through the chair. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll, accept, I'll accept the, the amendment. We already have a business district. Right, and, but, say but, business I, or business. Business and oh. industrial, you know? Or, I don't know. Or, Industrial and, and industrial amenities. Anything that can qualify as industrial amenities comes in there, otherwise it doesn't. So that excludes the strip malls, that excludes, uh, like even self-storage, I think it excludes that. But anything that will serve a purpose to the people who are employed by the industries there can get in there, but we make it harder for others to come in, which gives us a little bit of control. So can, go ahead. I, I think your point of when you drive down that street, what comes to my mind is office. Mm -hmm. So changing it to business might be, have one definition, but, but to just add office and industrial as a zone gives it a different connotation that incorporates where we are and still um, addresses Rhea's goal, and I, I support her goal completely that I'd love to have big industry want to come and locate in Hopkinton and, and continue to work to make that happen. But, but that's, you know, that could be five, 10 years down the road. Right now, let's, let's try, to, okay. let's try to, to, to develop the office and industrial spaces that we've got there. Um, this is from Franklin Zoning. This is the intent of the zoning. So every zone, they have a statement of what the intent of each zone is. We have a little bit of that, mm -hmm. but we really don't have what the state, what the intent is of the zone. Mm -hmm. And I think if we are able to clear this up, it'll be a lot easier to fill in all these uses with by right or special permit. I have something that might help. A bio district, BIO, business industrial office, might work. <laughs> you can't call it a bio district because then, then people. down the road people are just going to interpret it as biopharmaceuticals. <laughs> I understand, but that's what we're trying to attract. <laughs> right, right. I know biopharmaceuticals are that's fine, what we're trying but to get. Uh, um, but yeah, <laughs> I would like to propose that we put this on our list of things to do, but we don't try to finish it all tonight because <laughs> I think there's a lot more to discuss and a lot of good ideas that have come up. And, it, and I think otherwise we might be trying to say, just put a Band-Aid on one thing and not look at the big picture of, you know, let's get the definitions down and possibly clarify these things. Yeah. Go ahead. Just as a word of word of caution, I agree with what you're saying that when you when you drive down the street, it, the zone is a certain thing in your mind. And would I term that zone industrial A? No. But if I'm sitting in town meeting and you're going to change the name on it, regardless of the fact that you're not changing anything in the zoning, people are going to put their feet down and say, "No way, because you're doing this, so you must be doing it for a reason." Oh, I understand. Yeah. So there's that. And the other thing that I want to say is, um, is when you put things in by right, if, and right now we've got three things that are currently added as by right uses, you're going to have 50% of the people that are good with this one and 25 that are good with this one but not good with that. And when you start putting too many changes into one motion or one thing, it causes you problems because people are going to be opposed to this or that, 
in making things by right, people put their feet in a little, a little harder, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I, and actually, I, we did discuss that very briefly last time about you know, whether we should have them all separated versus all together in one motion and not the, wanting excuse to. Excuse me, yeah. to the chair and everybody else, we have to have a motion and a second and we're now going way off. So do we, I thought we voted on it. Do you want to vote going. on it or do you want me to withdraw it? Are we going back to the storage? You're, you're no, 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 I made a motion to, to, change, to, to do a name change oh. and, then it was, <laughs> and then it was amended, which I agreed to. And then I just wanted to know if, if we, we're not discussing the motion, we're Good going point. off. And so we, would we, we want to table that motion. would you like to table it or can we do a straw poll? Table it or no, vote on it tonight. Poll, but, we can't. But, well, I don't know what yeah, how these are supposed to done, be done. Uh, one more point. We can name it whatever we want, but we need to define it. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, so I am all for working on naming and defining, but you know, putting non-industrial uses and into industrial zone by right doesn't really work for the rest of the do world. Do we want to vote? on this motion tonight, or do we want to table it for another? Table. More, okay. Does everyone table. agree to table it? Then I will withdraw. That motion, okay. I withdraw. Oh no, you made the last motion. I withdraw. <laughs> <laughs> and we were going to discuss self-storage. Did we want to discuss <laughs> self-storage by either special permit or by right? And well, it, since since we're gonna we're gonna go over the same stuff, I'll, I'll make a motion to allow self storage facilities for residential and commercial use by special permit in the industrial aid district. Second. I'll accept it. Discussion. I'm sorry. The, the, yes. I'm sorry. I missed that. I'm sorry. That's okay. I believe you were here to to give input on the self-storage. Self-storage is up. Self-storage is up. <laughs> okay. okay. There's, a, there's a motion on the table to add it. Okay. By special permit. Okay. So we had asked for it by right, but by special permit is also for, I guess, consideration. So we obviously have a, a viable business proposal that we'd like to put forward someplace in town and as it is currently defined whether it's in industrial a or not this type of business is not allowed even allowed in town by special permit or not it's not defined for any of the zones so again going back to your point looking at industrial a we felt that this business was a fit for that location and that area and not just our particular plot of land but looking at the zone as a whole um, so with that said, I mean, uh, questions about changes that would have to go along with that. We've submitted the wording. Um, there would, I think the parking requirements need to be, you know, discussed at some point, whether that doesn't really come out of here or zoning or uh, planning board. But. but you're okay with a special permit? We would prefer it by right. <laughs> of course <Yeah>. you would. <laughs> um, <laughs> as, yes, we would be open to special permit and giving us a way at least in to make our business case and um, show you what we have and we're willing to go through the as we've done before the other okay. thank you perfect any questions that <laughs> okay. that was a question i had with regards to the stuff that you did last week. week but not to we're gonna we're gonna do that after we yeah. no but it, it's it's related, related. to okay. related to this it talks about parking in the in this bylaw mm -hmm. and it refers to um and i meant to look it up before i came it refers to section 124 maybe something how do we determine parking um requirements for uses in this district i guess is my question if it's if it's under a special permit, does it get looked at separately, or in that section that's referred to in here, does it have a bunch of uses and standards with those uses? I would agree that it goes with the standards with the uses. 
So, but it, in the case of self storage, it's not allowed in town right now. There's no standards for that. So you would have to add a. So we'd have to I would identify what the standards are. To yes. 210 124. So we're going to have to look. We've at run into that before, though. Yeah, we have. We actually the, the, where, restaurant. Where, where we, yeah, where we <laughs> where we ran into it and and, and messed restaurant. up was with um, Starbucks when they came in and called themselves a retail store. No restaurant. They called them. No, they called themselves a no a, a breakfast place or something. And the outdoor seating and decant. And, and then and and. And, the, and they brought in standards to show that this is how many, but didn't allow for the queuing of the 40 people waiting to pick up their lattes that they keyed in the thing right, for. Right, right. And, and then the outside seating. That wasn't. But at that's least what with a special us. permit, you get to discuss that. Yeah. Right, right. Just right. Just right. FYI. <laughs> and to, to Kathy's point, that's what yeah. she said. They, that they'd make their. Yeah. Right, we don't have so, any of those standards. Yeah, so. and the self storage facility doesn't really fit into the generic parking requirements, your office, your retail, right. Right. your restaurant, and then there's number of spaces per, whether it's square foot or seats and such, and this really does not fall into the, okay. any of those categories. So I guess I'd, I'd have to suggest that it at a later meeting that we review the parking requirements for the things that we have added to this to see whether they're covered yes. or not. Because there must be some industry standards that we can, we can yeah. get for any all of these things. You know, the, if, like even car washes and things like that, there's got to be average queuing because they build them and they don't fail. There is Okay, thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Wait a minute. Any further discussion? Um, yeah, it seems to me we're straying ever further from what Rhea told us this district was about. This is now no longer even an amenity for business. It doesn't encourage businesses to take the lot next to it. I don't know how to run a self-storage, but it seems to me when I've used them, there might be one employee on the grounds at a time. This is a massive amount of real estate, which will employ maybe as many people as on my hand, which for the business owner is a cash cow because there's not much maintenance, which means they're not likely to abandon this property. So we are going to allow a massive amount of ground to become an employment opportunity for this many people. And it's not an amenity to what we're trying to do in that district. To me, this, by special permit, makes no sense at all because it doesn't do what we were hoping that district to do. We may have some spare open lots, but as Rhea pointed out, we had those in Elmwood, and now it's virtually full. I don't want to be short-sighted about what we do with this ground, which then is unlikely to leave and will employ for, I don't know what the wages are, but my guess is not too high, four or five people. So you say, to the chair, a, a, a couple yes. points. Um, I disagree that it's not an amenity for the area because if people have storage, right now, if anybody um, has a small apartment, they're, they're downsizing and they want to store, uh, one would have to go to uh, Milford or Upton or somewhere else in order to put, store anything. And uh, to Rhea's point where she said it's 100% it's built out, it, it isn't at all. There's all that other land where, the, where we're talking about hotels and everything else to try and try and build out the the present building that was in the back there and, and some of the others are filled, but there's still a lot of build out that could be done up to a million square feet could still be built out uh, on at Elmwood Park. So there's there's still a lot more to uh, to fit in by present standard by present um, by a present zoning a million square feet. Yes, sir. I agree that it's an amenity to homeowners. We were talking about amenities to bring businesses. That's two different things. 
And I don't think you said it's 100% filled. I think you said 70%. No, I, I was talking about Elmwood Park. Right. And the buildings, the large buildings, are now full. Okay. They were not full when we were talking about this stuff a couple of years ago. Um, there is still room for development in the Elmwood area. Um, but South Street is in pretty good condition. It has a couple of buildings that are empty, but it's not like 70% empty. It's, no, right. you know, it's, um, and to your point, Ted, about the fact that we want to allow certain land to be developed for that big, sexy company who wants to come here. If there's no availability, they're not going to come here. So if we're chopping it up and allowing little, you know, service uses to take over, generally speaking, we won't get those folks. Which I think which is I why agree we with, were which is why I about. say this is a short-sighted yeah. proposal. Anyone else? Should we take a vote? We have a motion and a second. So, all in favor? Um, and this is allowing by special permit in industrial A only. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Abstentions? Two. Okay. So, um, we have a clarification of the naming and purpose of industrial zones to discuss at a future, a future meeting. Um, researching parking requirements for the just, various uses. Just making sure that yeah. we're covered for yeah. all these things okay. that have been added. Yeah. And um, can, I, can I keep this for yep. reference? Yep. Um, but if we can get a copy, uh, if, if there's, do you know, can you get an, an electronic copy of that or no? It's frank. Otherwise, I can scan yep. it. Shall I um, send it directly to you, Mary, or should I send it to Georgia? Who should I send? send? It to both yes. of us. That's the nice thing about email, it doesn't take two steps. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. In terms of the site plan standards, Georgia has suggested that instead of these being um, these suggestions for um, I'm losing some of my words here um, <laughs> for site plan drawings, these suggestions for site plan drawings um, not um, not be added as bylaws, not be added to the bylaws, but rather be added to site plan review, submission requirements and procedures. Mm -hmm. So um, it makes a lot of sense because this just seems like the place it should be. So that would be the adding construction entrances and the having the drawings orient north that include the bar scale. So that's, um, that's what we're proposing is that we send it to planning board with the suggestion that it go into these guidelines, are they called? Procedures? Procedures? Yep. And I don't know that we need to vote on it. I just wanted to get people's thoughts on it. They were great suggestions um, because we've seen so many different proposals in different formats. <laughs> Sometimes it's really hard to see, you know, what it is now, where it's supposed to be, because it it doesn't have these standards. So, what, 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 here, I'll just make a motion to, to um, ask the planning board if they would just add it to the site. Okay, so we'll make it official. Yes. I'll make Sorry. a motion. Carol, Carol has. I just had a. I, I'm just curious. Um, the second one makes all the sense in the world to me. What exactly is a construction entrance? That's the construction the pad. So they, like Saddle Hill Road, for example, when they have an active site with a ton of soil, they put uh, riprap, certain fabric, netting, 
so when the trucks are coming in and off, that dirt's not brought into the public roadway. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so that needs to be, there's one of them to Chamberlain right now, um, that way to reduce the amount of dirt on Chamberlain. Is, is that not in all of the site plan so that, standards? That's one of the sure. added conditions that we usually put on every site plan approval that says the applicant must adhere to the erosion control and maintenance prevention. It's one of the boilerplates. It's not listed as a site plan standard, but it's the standard condition that we always put in. Okay, so if we put it in here as a site plan standard, are we going to put it in here as a standard as it's written in all all the approvals that the planning board gives? Yeah, with so those sp we'll specific that. items? Yeah. Saying that it'll be this, yeah, that? We've always added that. We have. So yeah. in the back of um, the site plan application requirements, recommendations, in the back of it, it lists those five conditions, and that is, I think, number three. Okay. All right. You can make your motion now. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> make a motion uh, to uh, amend the uh, site, site plan review to require construction entities for all approved site plan projects and to require that all site plan drawings be broken into the pillar and include a bar scale, which I've talked about. So they don't. <laughs> Second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Hi. Hi. That doesn't have to go anywhere, though. Extension. There was a letter that was printed out for you guys. It wasn't in the packet. This is a proposal that we we request um, that mobile vendors not be something that we discuss, but that we recommend the select board to appoint a committee or a task force or whatever it is that would be necessary to do the research on this, determine where bylaws and regulations need to be put into place that would govern mobile vendors appropriately. Um, so this is just a, a draft letter from me and so I'll let you guys skim it. And I um, and I think Georgia was recommending that this is not really appropriate for us to discuss under zoning bylaws. So it makes more sense for us to um, give it to them. Recommend it elsewhere. Yeah. So there's no necessity for a vote on it, but I just wanted your buy-in. Yeah, I think um, the only thing I really uh, wanted to emphasize with Mike Shepard was that he not lump in um, mobile vendors on private property because he started to talk about some of those that were on private property, even though it's accessible for the public, um, snappy dogs behind the CVS that kind of a thing. That's private property. So this is definitely just in public ways. I had those brick oven pizza people come from my daughter's birthday party over the summer. Yeah, so, but, uh, but essentially, you know, I can, I can add something like that. These are some of the things that we have thought of, but if we're asking them to form a committee, that committee would then be responsible for determining whether or not it should include anything in the public, public way or private property or any of those regulations. So, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Well, I, I, I did bring this up um, at the Board of Selective Meeting that, uh, and um, uh, we agreed to um, look into it. Okay, good. So, but if we still send this up because okay. I, that, that, this was two It'll weeks ago. This was after our meetings, two meetings ago that okay. I said it would be coming. So this is, it, the timing's great. Okay, perfect. Any other thoughts on it? All right, Georgia and I'll finalize it and send it out. Uh, I, okay. Um, 
Georgia, mm -hmm. what is the deadline for planning board to receive recommendations from us and for them to be able to hold their public hearing? Um, so I know from speaking to Elaine, the planning board will be addressing those at their meetings in January, so January 14th, um, and then I forget what our last meeting in January is. And I think Zach is next meeting. It's January 7th. January 7th, so that's a week before the next planning board meeting. Um, I suggest that we <coughs> review those draft language changes at our January 7th meeting. Because we, we've I believe done good. We've, do, we've done very well yeah. getting stuff up, you know, sending them all along, I yeah. think so. But I think, I think, first of all, just because um, <laughs> it's right before the holidays and I'm really tired and, and I think other people are really tired. But I just, uh, I think that there's some, some things to discuss additionally around the um, by right and industrial A and B districts that we need to do and we, we will not have the energy to do it in 25 minutes tonight. And so that's why I suggest we discuss those wording changes on January 7th. Okay, is our first agenda item. And then we'll be able to uh, put forward all of those all of all of the available ones we have <coughs> to the planning board from that meeting okay 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 and then we can settle down for some longer term discussions <laughs> 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 all right um has everyone had a chance to review the minutes that were in the package yes yes and um are there any discussions corrections on Matt? Yes. Under the meeting schedule, it says the committee rescheduled its 121-18 meeting to 122-18. I think those are supposed to be 19. 19, yeah. Okay. Yes. And the only thing I had in reading it is, is number four. Mm -hmm. uh, the second to last sentence, it says the consensus was that an increase in 3,000 square feet. I just think that should be of... That's what you're talking about, right? Increasing the retail Increasing space from of, two yeah. to five. So it should say the consensus was that an increase of 3,000 square feet would not result in enough of a difference. Right, yeah. Just a typo. And we were going to bring up one of those topics again when you were present because- About the uh, yeah. solar, park solar. Machine. So, so we'll discuss that next time as well after we do the wording, okay, changes. All right. Do we have any other business tonight? Just one comment. Uh, the last planning board meeting, the agenda items for the next meeting for the planning board on 114 lists zoning advisory committee items of paper streets and sidewalks. Yep. <laughs> and we haven't talked about it. We yet. haven't begun to do that. I'm just wondering. I mean, that's on that's the planning board's we agenda need. for the, their next meeting. Mary, from what oh. I understand, the planning board is going to be discussing on their own. Yes. Because that's a regulation. But it just uh, listed as a zoning advisory committee. Thanks for spotting that. Oh, I'll yeah, take that Zach yes. part out and just say planning board. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, correct. I made that clear. Because we were told not to. Yes, that we were told one of not our... to. That the planning board was going to talk about yeah. how to handle it and whether or not it would come back to us in Thank any you. way. That made right. it confusing. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the minutes. So move. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? I'll abstain. It was me. Okay. Or oh, you can still vote. Tom. I guess okay. I'll abstain too because I, I don't know whether it's an accurate. Okay. 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 <laughs> all right. And motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We won't accept any opposed. <laughs> Great job. Abstentions. <laughs> Thank Discussion. you very much. Last <laughs> week. Thank you. We're done.